Hello, this is Dr. Gay from Forsake MRI, and this is an interesting case of a 15-year-old who had a papillary abnormality in the anterior thigh. The doctor thought maybe it was a tumor and they wanted to find out, um, and so they did an MRI with and without contrast, and they put a marker over the abnormality, which we can see here. So this is the mid to distal aspect of the thigh. This is the rectus femoris right here, so it's right in the distal rectus femoris. This is the vasus lateralis, medialis, intermedius here. But on this T1 image here that's not fat suppressed, things are completely normal. Here's the fat suppressed T1 sequence, which also looks completely normal. There's the marker right there. And now we have the fat suppressed T1 sequence. And along the distal aspect, just distal to the marker, we see this little subtle band of enhancement. So there's something abnormal here. I don't see a soft tissue mass. It's rounded, well-defined. And this is in the central portion. And you can see normal muscle around the edge. And this is just a little central area of enhancement. So this is a classic injury of the central portion of the rectus femoris. So the rectus femoris has peripheral muscle fibers that attach to the direct head tendon. And it also has separate muscle fibers here in the middle. And they come together to the vertical central tendon here. And the central tendon is called the indirect head tendon. And uh, again, these two tendons uh, come together to form the muscle. So the rectus femoris is unusual in that it has two different tendons that come together. One is in the middle called the indirect head, this vertical black line. You can see it right here. And again, the indirect head, this comes off the anterior superior acetabulum. And you have another one that comes off the anterior inferior iliac spine. And it goes along the anterior margin up high, blends with the anterior muscle capsule, and you really don't even see it. It just blends in there, maybe a little bit of thickening, but in, for all purposes, it's just invisible. But what you really see in the middle portion here is the indirect head. So the indirect head, there's a tendon, and all the muscles in sort of a cylindrical fashion go around the periphery here of the central tendon. They all go radially and attach to the central tendon. But the outer muscles here are separate. So when this it has a str uh, stress on it, it can pull away the central tendon and the central muscles from the surrounding peripheral muscles here that go to the direct head. So you get a funny pattern of hemorrhage or edema within the muscle. So if you see anything in the central portion, think about injury of the indirect head of the muscle. And this is what we have in this case, a really subtle example. I think these show up best on the sagittal images here. This area right here that I'm outlining, this is the, the central muscle from the indirect head. And you can see how right here is rounded and there's a little bit of brightness on this uh, enhanced image. And that little bit of enhancement here is along the periphery. So the muscle should come down here and blend with these other muscles around the edge, but instead it's torn distally and retracted back. And this is the retracted end of that central muscle. And there's a little bit of enhancement at the periphery. And the bulk of the muscles around the outside are normal. So again, this is a partial tear involving the indirect head muscle is torn distally and just retracted back just a little bit. And so whenever they flex your leg, this must ball up and contract and, and uh, cause the area of palpable abnormality. So that is it, a partial tear of the indirect head of the rectus femoris muscle.